Hey guys, it's Lauren, contributing travel writer for Wine Enthusiasts. We're just getting set up for tonight's uh, Instagram Live with Corvan. Hey, Lauren, hey, how are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm in Pasadena, sunny, uh, marvelous, gorgeous Pasadena. Yeah, good, good to hear. Um, I'm having some red lighting this evening. It's either that or I got all the sun on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> it was so nice to finally be outside and have some really great weather over here. I know California is forever sunny, but how are you? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm doing really well. And indeed, it is sunny. It rained yesterday, but today is just perfect. Uh, well, unbelievable. Let me say hello to our audience this evening. Hi, guys. My name is Lauren Mowry. I'm the contributing travel editor for Wine Enthusiast Magazine. Thanks for joining us tonight on Instagram Live. We are speaking with uh, Greg Lambrecht from Corvan. He's the founder of this fantastic device that we're going to hear all about. And I'm super excited for this interview because, as I mentioned to Greg recently, um, he's been like my hero uh, over the last few years. This device has saved me in many occasions because I am studying for my Master of Wine. And I use it all the time. It is perfect for a host of occasions, so I'm really excited uh, to hear what he has to tell us. Um, so Greg, do you want to introduce yourself? Talk about the uh, founding of the, or the inception of the device and uh, a little bit about the company. Sure, yeah, and, and uh, never been anybody's hero before. So <laughs> thank you so much. You were, uh, when I heard that you were going to be on, my heart pounded. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> I, I As hope someone I admire and really look, at, you know, look up to for, for, for coming up with this. And you have a day job, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a wonderful day job. So, and it relates uh, to the founding of Corvin. and certainly gave me the technical skills to be able to make it. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I work in medicine. I am not a wine professional. So uh, <laughs> feel free to keep your complicated questions about wine to the <laughs> MW student who is almost there. No way. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I uh, worked in medicine from the time I, I, had a, I had a career in physics first and I got out of that as fast as I could and uh, went back into medicine. I've been inventing new medical therapies since I was 23, I think. And uh, my very first uh, medical product was a needle-based system. It was a, a peripheral IV catheter. And then my second, there's, there's a trend here, my second product uh, was a chemotherapy delivery system. Um, it worked with an implant that was underneath the skin. And we would access this implant called a port over and over again uh, with a needle in order to deliver somebody's therapy over a long period of time. So I got really good at making needles as a young man. Uh, so yeah, that's the foreshadowing to Corvin. Right. Uh, I, I also fell in love with wine when it was illegal for me to do so. Uh, I, was, I was 16, I went up to Napa Valley. My friends thought I looked older, I had a beard. <laughs> uh, which I shave every day. Uh, so, uh, but back then I didn't. And uh, so they, they put me in front to, to, to go into his tasting room and I had my first taste of wine. I was, I was, uh, I was smitten. I was hooked um, in, on California wine. I grew up in Newport beach, uh, California. And, uh, and so it, my love of wine expanded over the course of my medical career. I uh, started working with Europeans, drinking wines from France and from Spain and from Italy. And I realized it was an incredible variety of wines that were out there. Uh, started a small collection. I probably had like 20 or 30 bottles of wine in my, in my place in New York uh, where I was working. Uh, were you in and, an apartment at that time? Uh, so I was, we had just had our first kid. Um, so we had, we'd gone suburban. So uh, I'd worked Not at Pfizer headquarters in Manhattan and then we went up to Mamaroneck and then yep. migrated north to Rye and then um, uh, Greenwich uh, or Cos Cobb uh, and, uh, and then out to New Jersey because um, I was working with their orthopedic division, uh, Pfizer's orthopedic division a long time ago. So I, I was traveling a ton. I was running a division uh, in part in Japan and in the US. So I was traveling back and forth and commuting to Japan. Um, so I, I would come home and there'd always be these, these half empty bottles in the fridge that I was throwing away because my wife doesn't like the wines that I like, uh, and and prefers beer mostly. So uh, so we would we would fight over which wines to open, and I started to realize there was something fundamentally wrong with the way I was drinking wine. Like I I, I wanted to be able to taste three or four different wines in an evening and learn, and not have to compromise by saying, well, we're going to open this one, and then we'll drink this one until it's gone because it would oxidize otherwise. Right. And then we'll move to the next one. And, and uh, I wanted to be able to taste four or five different wines, do pairings at home. When my friends oh, came over, yeah. I wanted to offer them whatever they wanted. Uh, so I was holding a bottle in my hand and a needle uh, one evening. And I was like, <laughs> if there's only. 
<laughs> you fooled me, exactly. Uh, my dad That's is amazing. a type 1 diabetic, and he, he used to draw insulin out of bottles uh, all the time. So I was like, there's got to be a way. So I tried to suck it out by pulling the wine with a syringe, and yeah. it sucks it right back in because uh, you create a vacuum. So then I made the first prototype. I uh, pushed the wine out of the bottle with argon gas, and um, which is a noble gas. It doesn't react with yeah. wine. And uh, that was it. I, first night, I, I invented the prototype. Second night. First night was really a catastrophe. The second night, uh, <laughs> I drank from five different wines. Uh, were, were you like Edison? So you weren't like Edison with a thousand different um, bulbs before you hit that. <laughs> there was one pretty spectacular, let's call it like a um, stomp rocket event with a wine <laughs> bottle in a rented, a rented place in Saddle River, New Jersey. And uh, I'm going to admit to this, that tile damage in your kitchen, yeah, that was me. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> well, it's it's amazing to see when Coravan came out a few years ago, the transformation it's made in the wine business too. I mean, it's in restaurants now. Um, students are using it. Uh, as you mentioned, couples are using it so they can drink different wines. People who are trying to maybe hold back on how much they drink, like right now, many of us mm. in quarantine. Um, it's, it's actually a lifesaver for a variety of reasons. It's almost... Who could envision a world without Coravan at this point? <laughs> oh, thank you. What's uh, you know, Coravan like? I don't even know. Yeah, you know, it's it's crazy. Tiny bottles. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I know. I was talking to some guy. I was I was on a on a on a, on a Zoom meeting with an Australian producer this morning at three a.m. my time, and uh, they <laughs> talked about all the things they used to do uh, to like try to save the wine, pour them into half bottles or, you know, vacuum van, trying to suck the, suck the air out of them. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I remember the old suction devices and it, they never quite worked. So, yeah, um, yeah. well, let me tell our audience what our format is this evening. Uh, please feel free everyone to ask questions. You'll notice a little box on the bottom of your screen with a question mark, please pop into that or in, even in the comments and I'll try and catch them as they scroll by. If you have any questions about, the Corvan or Greg or his life on the road, because you do travel or did travel a lot. So you've got a lot of great stories and you've drank a lot of good wines is my understanding. Um, this evening, we're also gonna try three wines and use the three different models of Corvan on each one. So Greg will have a chance to explain um, the different models and uh, we'll actually get to try some cool wines while we're at it. So um, I guess we will get started on that Chardonnay. Do you have that Chardonnay? Is that I do. My okay. my amazing team uh, <laughs> delivered everything. I had, a, I had a family emergency and had to rush out here, but including this massive oh, magnum. Great. I didn't know if you get the magnum. <laughs> I got everything. I'm so psyched. It's always funny when hotel staff are like, these are for you, and you get <laughs> bottles show up, <laughs> and you're alone. <laughs> it's my job. This is what I do yes, for a living. my job. <laughs> I, uh, when I'm traveling, I find I, I leave a lot of bottles behind and tips and tips for the staff but I do yeah. have a lot of bottles behind for people and it's funny how their eyes will light up you know you're like do you drink wine and the oftentimes the guys you know working staff at, at a restaurant after hours in a hotel are like oh yeah give me those bottles so um, <laughs> anyway I, 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 I digress but <laughs> so tonight we are drinking from Jay Lore the Chardonnay from 2018 Arroyo Vista. This is a Monterey County wine, if you guys can all see the label. Um, I've already poured out a small splash just to make sure my core van was working. There we so go. This is, this is the model that we're um, experimenting with right now. Do you model three. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we, uh, you're here to learn this about core van. We can't count. Uh, this is the model three. Uh, it's our entry level model. Works fantastically um and just so, so we, everyone can see my precision pour there i love it so uh <laughs> there's a needle right here there's a trigger right there you'll hear the gas when i press that press the needle through the cork like so tip it sideways press the trigger short presses are much better for getting more glasses of wine out of the same capsule of gas of argon gas normally we say you can get 15 uh full glasses of wine uh out of each capsule but you can actually get more if you use those short presses and anytime you want more wine, just press it again. Well, then... that's actually a great, um, a great point to bring up because my dad, who is now a Corvin convert, uh, thanks to me, um, <laughs> he, he uh, got one for his, I think, Christmas last year. And he called Thank me up you. all upset. He's like, I'm not getting a lot of glasses out of this. I'm like, Dad, I know what you're like. And I have a feeling of <laughs> this. Holding that button down to Pour faster. sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody asked, what's the difference between Model 2 and Model 3? Uh, 
we have tried to make Coravin faster, easier, and more fun than opening a bottle. And we wanted to do it with as minimum training as possible. So uh, one of the things that we did, uh, but we used to, in, in the old models, we used to have a clamp that you had to interact with. We would squeeze mm -hmm. and place yep. the bottle and you had to remember the order of operations, what you did. Now you just take it, slam it down on the bottle, it clamps itself. You know, I was just actually clamp. like, I'm in my kitchen. I was thinking, did I leave that around if I had the old one here? Because in the old one, you had to yeah, yeah. it down and make sure you had it precisely down. And I noticed with the new model, um, you just shove it down and it, 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 it attaches on its own. So it's almost foolproof. That was the hope. That was the hope. So yeah, yeah, model three. That was a good upgrade. <laughs> Thank you. What I love you your, this, your, what do you, your- Pardon? I love your original model. That's a beautiful uh, old model 1000. That'll, that'll be a, a, an heirloom. <laughs> uh, just want to talk quickly about this wine from Jay Lore. Have you had it before? I haven't, no. You know, we did a tasting with some Monterey Chardonnays the other week. And uh, one thing that really stood out from me is the beauty of the fruit, the precision of the wines. Uh, but yet they have this gener generosity and this uh, ripeness, I guess, just from the sunshine in the area. Mm -hmm. So this Jay Lore really shows that. I just also, upgraded my glassware. Yeah, to, for uh, the to... audience, I, I, I should be showing everybody which model we're talking about. This, by the way, is a trick. Look yep. at that. <laughs> yep. So there's the Model 3. And uh, Corvan is running a special, which I'll pop that up in a few minutes after we're done talking about this. But um, while we're still on Model 3 and tasting the Chardonnay, maybe you can tell us a little bit about, you know, I touched on some of the uses for the device, but maybe if I missed anything, if you want to elaborate, because one thing that's also interesting is restaurant programs that do really fine and rare wines with uh, the device so people can taste something unique um if you want to elaborate yeah i mean we're we're, we're instrumental in that happening so we're sort of lucky um when you create something you you, you create it for a purpose and uh, sometimes people use it way beyond that purpose um and that's what we've seen with corbin so we're we're in over 60 countries uh, around the world uh, we're used in wineries um in their tasting rooms to taste people on back vintages uh mm -hmm. of wine um, we're like so Chateau Margaux and uh, Chateau um, uh, Obaye and, and uh, in Napa Valley, all up and down. Uh, they use it to taste their own wines um, as well before they send them to an event. Uh, so that and Burgundy, all of Burgundy uses, most of Burgundy uses it. Um, then restaurants for wine by the glass programs, really being able to do almost anything. I was talking to George Miliotis from Wine Bar George, and he was he was like, I serve a six or nine year vintage of this one Italian wine and cheese. He's like, I could never have done that before. Right, um, right. And, and now he can offer it to the guests. There are some restaurants that just say, well, whatever you want by the glass, we're happy to serve it to you. Yeah. Um, so it's a beautiful thing to see wine stores, uh, Total Wine and Spirits uh, will actually sample you on some wines before mm -hmm. you buy them, which was one of my dreams. Fantastic, yeah. um, and then there's the sales reps uh, for wineries and for distributors uh, that use it a ton uh, so that they can show their wines to more people uh, without them without having to schedule their day. But the most important thing for me is use at home. Um, that's why I invented it. I wanted to be able to drink a glass of white, a glass of red, a dessert wine. Um, I wanted to be able to pair. Uh, I love to be able to pour two glasses with one, yep. with one dish and learn why one is better than the other. Um, and, uh, and sort of generosity, people sort of think of Corbin as something that you use to drink alone. Um, yeah. you do, <laughs> I am, uh, but, uh, but it's also like when friends come over, I used to serve them whatever was open and, uh, whether or not that's what they wanted. They did, well, you know, right, I just have right. what's open. Now I'm like, go down into my cellar, grab whatever bottles you want and we'll just Corbin those. <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't admit this on air, but one, one use I have for it is, uh, you know, living in New York, I've, I've since moved out of the apartment, but a lot of bottles were just kind of under the bed or in the closet. So <laughs> they weren't really cared for and they didn't age necessarily that great. <laughs> but I had some neighbors that weren't that picky. So I, would, <laughs> I used the Corvin to taste which ones were still good. And then, you know, ones that were a little iffy, I would just put out in the hallway and let my neighbors <laughs> Explore. So we call that it the taste and toss using the Corvin. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's a t-shirt. Uh, well, <laughs> what I do is I write somebody's name on it. Like if I, if it's a wine that I don't like, I don't write that I don't like the wine on the, on the bottle. Yeah, yeah. But it's like not my style. It's somebody else's style. I'm like, yeah. this person's going to love this. Yeah, yeah. You wronged me. This bottle's for you. <laughs> 
Um, it looks like we have some questions piling up, actually. So let's uh, let's see what we got. Okay. It's beautiful. It's beautiful outside. Somebody asked, "How do you remove the pin, uh, the, the 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 needle? All you do is unscrew and pull it out the side. So it's pretty easy. Um, the needles fit uh, every system except for Model Eleven, which is special. We'll talk about that later. But um, the needles do wear out. They're covered in Teflon, um, so they yeah, last five hundred. Which is yeah. which actually helps the smooth glide into the the capsule or into the cork. Is that right? Super important. Uh, Teflon, we've tried to find something better than Teflon, but uh, there isn't. It cuts the force of insertion in half. Uh, really cold corks are a little harder to insert through, like this white wine. Uh, Italians, mm -hmm. we're yeah. going to be drinking an Italian wine. Those guys yeah. use rock hard cork and they, they shove yeah. them in there. Um, somebody asked if we use, if we can work with uh, synthetic corks. Uh, we can't. Uh, plastic corks are not elastic. One of the reasons why Corbin works and why you can do this after you drink from the bottle is because cork is really elastic. It's one of the most elastic solids right. we found in nature. Uh, synthetic corks are either plastic or a biopolymer, and those are not uh, elastic and they don't reseal. So cut the foil if you're at all concerned, take a look and see uh, see what kind of cork it is. And then someone actually asked if they are good for magnums, which we will be, we'll be getting to a magnum, but actually they asked about double magnum or bigger bottles. So I don't have experience with that yet. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, so yeah, there's a restaurant in Hong Kong that uses it on nine and 12 liter bottles. Uh, oh, Patrice wow. in Hong Kong. Yeah. So how and it's many quite, people does it take to do the tilt? <laughs> it's a beautiful ballet. Uh, it's yeah. gotta be Michelin starred. And so they just tilt over, one person tilts over the bottle, the other one, uh, activates the Coravin and and, uh, and holds the glass, and then it tilts back up again. Um, we do not work on uh, three, six, nine, twelve liter bottles. Uh, we just the clamp doesn't open up far enough. So um, yeah, yeah, I have made custom ones for winemakers, um, okay. people like Jean-Marc -Marc Rouleau and mm -hmm. and uh, some other producers, uh, Obayi, to, just to, so they can use it on theirs. But I, it's not a it's a custom item. Oh, so how what is the largest bottle that the Coravin fits on? Magnum is the one. Um, okay, every once in a while, you can fit on a three liter, uh, but it's not something that it's 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 not it's not guaranteed for sure. Okay, well, people will see us using one on a Magnum in in a minute, and then we have a few other questions actually that are interesting. Um, if I get small drippings from a bottle on its side after drying a glass, what is that a sign of? Because I've had okay. that happen as well. Yeah. So. Um, there are a couple of things. The cork closes, when you remove the needle, the first place it leaves is the uh, bottom of the cork, and then it sort of works its way up. So one of the causes of a couple drops at the top of a cork, if you've got a Coravin, is it, it's squeezing wine that's in that hole up and out of the cork to the top. Um, so sometimes seeing a drop of wine at the top, that's totally okay. Um, oh, hello, Argentina. Uh, the, other, um, the other reasons why, um, it's, I call it the rule of cold and old, Mm -hmm. The colder a cork is and the older a cork is, the longer it takes to reseal. So um, if you've oh. got, I would, if you've got a really cold bottle like this one, you'll notice I didn't turn it upside down right away. I yeah. waited a minute or two. Okay. Um, and that's because the cork takes just, it's less elastic when it's cold or old. Um, so give it a couple of minutes uh, upright. If you see some drips, just wipe it off um, okay. and then leave it standing upright. Like if it's in your cellar and it's dripped a couple of times, just wipe off the top, leave it standing upright for five, 10 minutes and then put it back in the, in the you cellar. You know, I It'll think my dad even asked me once that he had, because he had some wine come out through the top or something and he was like, oh, is it because I punched too many holes in the cork? Now, oh. I, now obviously the cork is flexible and it's supposed to kind of suck back into place to close the hole or something, but maybe it was an older cork that had some crumble or something, I don't know. It can be, and so um, one of the ways that uh, that the cork can leak is if the cork is really old, um, mm. it may not be sealing against the glass anymore um, as effectively. And so we okay. put in one and a half atmospheres and it can actually leak around the side of the cork uh, in that case. So a master of wine, Charles Curtis, taught me a very simple trick. And he goes, you simply hold the neck of the bottle, put your thumb on top, press down. If it slides, don't use Corbin. Uh -huh. um, okay. Pull the cork and start drinking it because uh, okay. your cork is, is dying. So um, Okay, good to know. There we go. <laughs> but we should move on to our second wine. And sure. the second model of Coravan we're discussing tonight. So this is a five. I've already got my, my oh, you already do too, just to save some time. <laughs> <laughs> and that looks silly fumbling on TV, even though it is quite easy. <laughs> all right, so here we go. No so, plan. All right. Ready to go. Here ah, we go, just so slam it down. A second, nothing. There we go. Tip sideways, press and let go, press and let go. 
there's a guy in Napa Valley in a restaurant who serves wine like this. Yeah. <laughs> It reminds me of uh, in northern Spain in Asturias where they serve the cider, you know, like this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Somebody asked us about screw caps. Yes, we work with screw caps. This is our screw cap. Now, did the screw cap come with the five? I saw it with the six. Yeah, it comes with uh, three, five, and six. So oh, it comes all of them, with all, yeah. okay. all current models. This is the, this is the model six. I think six. we just showed one, but I'll just show this again. So. Yeah. Um, but with the screw cap, it's a one and done, right? Uh, no, the screw cap is uh, reusable. So you get um, a couple, couple uses out of it. Okay. Quite a lot, actually. So if you okay. if you crack if you crack the bottle and you quickly place the screw cap on top, you oh, can treat it, it like yeah, a cork. Yeah, yeah, okay. Cool. It'll last. Uh, we used to say fifty strikes and three months for your wine. We're now okay. seeing about a hundred strikes and uh, okay. maybe up to a year. Store the wine on its side. Keep it really? cold. You get that long out of a screw cap. Store it on the side. Keep it cold. Um, okay. It can last a long time. Um, and let's just introduce the wine to our viewers. This is a Mezza Corona. This is uh, a producer from Northern Italy, up near the Dolomites, which is where I was supposed to be in a month. But Aww. we'll make it 2021. Hopefully I can visit this property. I actually know the, the team that owns it. Um, so it's a red blend from the Dolomites. And we have a 2018. And actually, it's a sustainable farm, hand-picked as they advertise. And it's got this really lovely, bright fruit character. Wow, yeah, juicy. Yeah, that is a really juicy, beautiful wine. I think one thing that's great about Corvan, not to sell it for you, but I love it, is that it's, <laughs> it's good on all wines. Um, I think there are sometimes like really old wines that are delicate, maybe, but who's drinking 100 year old Bordeaux at this stage? But for most <laughs> ranges of wines, even whether it's white and it preserves that fruit purity and freshness or a red like this, it preserves the juiciness. Um, and then we'll get to a slightly older wine after this. Um, however, I have had some people in my Master of Wine program wonder if with some of the older wines, uh, the wine changes a little bit too much after too many pumps. Can you speak to that? Or Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've got a call coming in. Let me hang up on them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this is me. I'm just proving that I'm wearing pants. So, uh, <laughs> so um uh, old wines, and actually, just in general, how do you get the best preservation? I did eight years of blind tasting before we launched uh, Corbin. And it, what I wanted to prove to myself was that five years after first pour, um, I could drink that bottle again and blind taste it against a bottle from the same case that had never been Corbin and not be able to tell the difference. So I went through lots of needle designs, lots of different gases, lots of different pressures, lots of different wines from around the world. Um, so it works. Um, there, somebody just asked the right question. How do you get the best out of the Coravin? Um, clean, clear, and cellar. We call it the three C's of Coravin. Super important. So I've done a blind tasting at 14 years. I've done five years with, with a wine. They really <laughs> want to talk to me. Uh, with, uh, with wine Feel free to answer it. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry, people. I'm sorry. I'm on the phone. Sorry That's about okay. That. No, I'm just uh, yeah, letting them know. So... Um, <laughs> There we go. Uh, busy guy. Uh, so um, I've, it, it can really last, but the way that the only way that it lasts if you use it right. So cleaning, uh, wash it. Somebody asked if you have to wash between glasses. No, and I'll show you why. But uh, this is not. People think of it as a corkscrew. And never wash a corkscrew. This is much more like a wine glass. Uh, so what you want to do is after you've used it, at the end of the evening, hot water through here. Uh, cleans out the valve and the needle and make sure that there's nothing that's in there that anything can grow out, uh, Britannomyces or Saccharomyces. So very important, clean. Clearing is something that you do between bottles. So if I just poured this red and I wanted to go pour the white, there's a little bit of red wine still in this needle in the valve. And I don't want to inject that into the next bottle. So quick press on the trigger just before you go to the next bottle. Pushes all that red wine out of the bottle or out of the Coravin so that you don't inject potentially oxidized red wine into the next one. That is super important when you start to get to older wines. Okay. Uh, older wines are really intolerant to having oxygen injected into them or oxidized right. wine injected. Right. So um, that's really important. Cleaning is really important. And then cellar, store the wines on its side, uh, on their side, keep the cork wet. Uh, wine lasts a whole lot longer. If you okay. do that, you get out five, 10, 15 years. So let's see if we have any other questions down here that I may have not got to yet. Um, oh, here's, this is an interesting one. Uh, we've thought about this ourselves in my wow. tasting group. Uh, any, is there any way to make a Corvan for sparkling wine? Oh, um, <laughs> uh, you've got a big audience. I, I, 
<laughs> so um, I, let me uh, let me throw their I, question up. No, so it's all, uh, I've got a I've got a um, I'm, I'm sure my marketing people are here. So um, <laughs> I've got to be careful. Uh, when I founded the company, we said faster, easier, more fun than opening a bottle, independent of closure. So we work with screw caps and we work with um, uh, natural corks of any kind. We don't work with plastic corks. And then um, I said still or sparkling. So uh, I can let you know that we have been working on sparkling wine for seven years. Um, you, I worked on still wine for eight. Uh, so uh, we've worked on sparkling for seven. It is my dream to celebrate every day. Uh, yeah. Imagine coming home and having two different glasses of champagne. Um, it glass. would be, yeah, going to a restaurant and seeing 50 champagnes by the glass. Yeah. That would be great. And yes. so, so yeah. we, we will uh, figure it out for sure. Uh, we will definitely figure it out. What, what are the challenges to that? Obviously, you have the pressure in the bottle. So how would you replace the pressure in the bottle? What kind uh, of, would it be to... like a, with an in and out system, like two needles, you know, one... I'll go, I'll go through the myriad of <laughs> challenges. Like um, at the same time one comes out, like pressure goes back in to keep well, it balanced or something. That, Some kind that of is a great, um, that is a great lead into the model 11, which we'll use next. But um, <laughs> uh, there are so many problems. One is uh, sparkling wines are at all sorts of different levels of pressure. Yeah. So it's called perlage. And yeah. you got to make sure that whatever you do, you don't change that perlage so that you, you can't tell the difference between, I want you to be able to drink a bottle of champagne at least three months out. Uh, versus a, and the last glass be just as good as the first from a brand new bottle. So got to balance pressure. Um, you notice the cork has that metal cap and wire basket yep, at yeah, the top yep. forever. Uh, got to figure yeah. out how to deal with that. Um, you've got so to deal- Do you deal... think you would replace like a quick pull it out I... and kind of like with the- Maybe, I got <laughs> yeah, you'd I have to uh... really have a long needle to get through that deep thick cork that's on the- um... I don't want to. I don't want to spoil. But we should have spent this entire interview mo 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 <laughs> talking about what we don't I'm have. Think about it for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so hard. We should get to our last wine also because this is really the um, highlight of the show. This <laughs> showing go. off. Let me step back here so everyone can see the magnum. With so you have an eleven, I think, to show everybody. This is a six. Six I red. Candy red. Um, cherry bomb. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. It's my favorite color. It um, is a beautiful color. So um, if you could tell us a little bit about the difference between this, the six and the 11, and I'm going to pour a little wine while you do that. Sure. I'll do the three, six and 11. So three only okay. comes in, in black. Uh, the six uh, comes in two different colors uh, right now, and it'll probably come in a lot more. So it comes in silver and red. Uh, traditionally, we, we launch a variety of different colors to match people's kitchens. The materials are a little bit higher quality. Uh, they both work with the same needle and the same gas. Um, the 11 is different. So this was the faster, easier, more fun than opening a bottle. It was my dream that a restaurant could use a Coravin pouring one hand at a distance across the table, zero training. So with the model 11, you can set the pour uh, volume. So I've got a taste or a glass and you can set the taste or glass on your phone. Uh, wow. okay. Coravin Moments app, download the Coravin Moments app. It is fun um, wow. for a number of reasons cool. and it's free. Uh, so. Um, next level technology with that it, yeah it's got uh, the same smart clamps that are used by the rest of the systems uh, you just press it through it turns green uh, i then tip it sideways and it pours itself wow <laughs> so, so that's pretty to... what my dad needs so he doesn't make any more mistakes with his um that's exactly <laughs> right <laughs> maybe you'll exactly get that right. upgrade for the next birthday so i'm pouring um, myself a healthy glass of this one because it's from a bigger bottle so i, I just want to introduce this wine as well this is um the importer is frederick wildman and this is fattoria de barbie and it's a brunello di montalcino from 2012 and what's great about this wine uh is we're exploring it's a sangiovese obviously from montalcino and so it has this lovely sort of burnished orange hue, which is an indication of age, but also very characteristic of the grape. So back to the question about using Corbin on older wines. I mean, this is only about eight years, so it's not necessarily that old, but um, you know, as they age, people worry if they're going to alter the, the, the makeup of the wine. Yeah, I mean, it's a, the cork is great, uh, resealed right away. Uh, the wine is, Delicious. That's, this is that's delicious. Brunello all day, every day. Yeah. Yep. 
Yes. This would Great not be a taste and toss. This would be. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a taste and hoard. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. More magnums, please. Yes. <laughs> That's what, yeah, it's a, it is an Italian delicacy. I agree. Um, um, we we have a special offer running. I just want to throw that up on the screen as well. If you want to talk about that, it's the two core van capsules that are coming with any smart clamp purchase system purchase. I guess there's not much more to say, but I want to give. Uh, the audience an opportunity to take advantage of that. Yeah, uh, please go to uh, wineenthusiast.com. They've been great partners of ours from the beginning. Um, really fantastic. I'm just about to buy some wine fridges for you guys. Uh, oh. Wine cabinets. Yeah, I need some. Uh, my son needs one here in LA. Very um, cool. Yeah. Uh, so Corbin, uh, we've got a special on anything with smart clamps, these clamps that we're showing tonight. So the three, five, six, eleven. Um, they are uh, all coming with an additional two capsules of uh, argon gas. So um, they, they already come with a couple. They'll come with a couple more. Uh, so that'll give you an extra 30 to 40 glasses of wine, uh, which is great. And by the way, when you're done, if you're in the United States, when you're done with your capsules, please recycle them. Uh, they are metal. Um, so, so how do we recycle them? Actually, that's a great point. Yeah, so they, they go right into the metal stream in the U.S. It varies okay. by geography. Uh, somebody asked, can we do it off of a half bottle? Yes, you can use Corvin on a half bottle. Okay. Um, anything from a half bottle up to a magnum. Uh, it'll, it works well. I drink a lot of dessert wines that come in small format. Um, right. Yeah, dessert wine with Corvin. That's a, a great way to end the day. That'll be our next interview. <laughs> oh, I, I love it. I love we'll have it. some Bear Nauschleitze and some Sauternal. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk through those. Well, our time has actually come up, um, uh, amazingly <laughs> enough, because this went really fast. So I just want to thank you for joining and let our, did you have another um, charity you were thinking of mentioning? Yes, thank you very much. Actually, um, uh, you wanted to point the audience to as well? Yeah, so the one group that has been really hammered by um, COVID-19, and there have been many, uh, is the restaurant world, as you know. So um, Bobby Stuckey and a master sommelier and, and a bunch of his folks <laughs> have pulled together a charity called the Independent Restaurant Coalition. Um, and I think the website is saverestaurants.com. Uh, if you're in the US, uh, please go there. Uh, you can sign on to uh, try to guide your Congress person uh, to help with, the bills didn't really help restaurants uh, that had passed here. So please go there and, and, um, and help out. Imagine the number of people, there's 11 million people involved in the restaurant world uh, in the United States and most of them are out of work. So. Uh, uh, the Independent Restaurant Coalition is lobbying on behalf of all the small restaurants out there uh, that are trying to uh, get back started up um, and, and save their employees. So well, please go there. That's great. Thank you for ending on that. We all need restaurants in our lives because <laughs> yeah, I can't wait <laughs> for many, <laughs> for many reasons. So anyway, thank you for joining us. I know you're in California on a family uh, family obligation. So it was a pleasure to have you this evening. Thank you to our lovely audience for joining tonight. And we'll see you on the next round with Wine Enthusiast on Instagram Live. Cheers. Cheers. Good luck on your uh, M the rest of your MW. It got canceled this year. I got oh, another year to study. <laughs> extra year to study. Perfect. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>